Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, dear journalists. Uh, welcome to the press conference on the second day of the informal meeting of the transport ministers. The ministers had an early start already yesterday. The debate uh, continued today on the future, future investment uh, policy topics for the transport sector. Estonian Minister for Economic Affairs and Infrastructure, Ms. Kadri Simson, and the European Commissioner for Transport, Ms. Violeta Pulch, will give an overview of the meeting. After that, we have time for some questions. But without further ado, Minister Kadri Simson, the floor is yours. Thank you, and uh, dear journalists, welcome to the Tallinn Cultural Hub. We have had um, numerous interesting uh, and valuable discussions during the past two days. Um, discussions how to improve connectivity within Europe. And it has been my pleasure to hear many good ideas around the meeting table. As you know, the European Commission has initiated a debate on the future of Europe. And as part of this debate, um, the Commission has also asked member states and other stakeholders to, to reflect on the future of EU finances. I considered it um, important for transport and energy ministers to, con to contribute to this debate uh, from early on, as uh, these debates will frame the future of the EU infrastructure investments. And this is also a reason why, in addition to the informal meeting of the transport and energy ministers, uh, will also accompany it with a high-level Connecting Europe conference, which will allow for the stakeholders to contribute to this debate. I consider the Trans-European Network, um, Trans-European Transport Network, TNT, uh, to be the backbone of the European single market. Proper infrastructure is important for our citizens and businesses, and it helps to bring along further economic growth and prosperity. Therefore, it is important to plan for a stable EU investment framework for the high importance European infrastructure. Today, we have a successful Connecting Europe facility as a key EU funding instrument for the realization of the TNT network. And I believe that CEF should continue also in the future as to provide a stable um, investment um, for the long-term investments. And the stability of the investment priorities uh, over time is crucial to finalize the projects of the European importance to complete the 10T network by 2030, as agreed by the member states and other stakeholders. And it is clear that public finances, including the EU finances, are not endless, and therefore clear priorities need to be set for the future inv infrastructure investment framework. And this is uh, what we have aimed at, aimed at during the last two days. So thank you for your attention. And before we get to your questions, um, let me give the floor to Commissioner Pulc, Violeta. Thank you very much, uh, and good afternoon uh, to all of you in my name as well. Uh, these were really two uh, very encouraging and positive uh, uh, days uh, here in Tallinn. And first of all, thank you for excellent organization uh, by the uh, presidency. Uh, and let me share my, uh, what I'm going to take with me back to Brussels. Yesterday's meeting, together with the uh, ministers of energy, uh, really strengthened uh, our position that in the future more and more we have to think about connectivity, uh, bringing together energy transport and in addition to that also digital. Because uh, all these three infrastructure uh, enablers are really uh, coming together on the solution level uh, in a relationship with the customer and businesses. So uh, I was very much encouraged, uh, along with my colleague, Commissioner Kanieta and Vice President Shevchevich, when ministers were really inviting us uh, to uh, act in this spirit in the future as well. The other message, uh, which was very clear as well too, yesterday and today, and brings these two days together very well, is that CEF has delivered. And that everyone wants to continue with a CEF type of financing, 
even further inviting uh, us to take a closer look to, uh, and see if we can uh, spill over these positive um, tools that we developed along the CEF financing for 10T to other sources of financing. Especially encouraging are, of course, the numbers. And uh, here I would like to share with you just a few of them and then invite you to take a closer look uh, at the really good report uh, that we produced where all the results are mentioned, but also future potentials of the development of the 10 network uh, focusing on transport this time. First is that everybody agreed that CEF is creating European value that we could not create without CEF, especially cross-border connectivity, uh, missing links, and horizontal uh, elements that engage all of us, meaning decarbonization and digitalization. And I'm glad to say that this was reconfirmed as uh, the priority agenda for the future as well. Uh, but some additional elements will need to be uh, brought on board as well, especially consider its systemic approach, bringing together core uh, network logic along with the comprehensive network. And also today, uh, some representatives over stressed that last mile needs to be taken uh, on board as well when we do the planning, when we look at the bigger picture. CEF is also uh, has proved to be very effective. In transport sector, 22.4 billion uh, euros committed uh, by the end of 2017 will mobilize over 46.7 billion uh, overall investments in EU. And that only in the first three years will mobilize over 96% of uh, the CEF transport grant budget for 2014-2020. That is a very clear message. Good projects are out there. And we need to ensure and make sure that we can provide proper financial mechanisms to support them. For the first time, uh, 11 billion euros from the cohesion budget was directly managed within the CEF framework, and 100% of the envelope was allocated in half of the MFF period, with five to six times of our subscription. Another very strong message, transport can deliver. There are lots of projects out there. We need to work clo closer and even more on financial tools. CEF also demonstrated the capacity to mobilize significant investment uh, through grants, financial instruments, and blending, which was a completely new developed instrument uh, only in this uh, mandate of the Commission, and already started uh, to deliver. I am very happy that uh, overall, already until now, we were able to engage additional 1.4 uh, billion euros of investments in transport that we didn't have before. And again, with 2.6 oversubscription. So uh, something is happening in the uh, portfolio and in the member states. We are recognizing that with no infrastructure, being transport, energy, or digital, there is no growth, there is no progress, uh, there is no global lead. So uh, that, those messages uh, also inspired all other further discussions. And um, let me share at the end with you also some estimates, which are then very in much more details explained in the documents that um, resulted out of the first um, draft of our future investment document, where all member states submitted by the financial instruments their needs for until 2030. And they took the exercise very seriously. Now we can confidently say by, that by, the, by 2030, we need 500 billion euros of additional investments in the core network and 1.5 trillion euros of investments, including core and comprehensive network. This might sound big, but considering that over 100 trillion euros of money is undeployed, sitting somewhere on the accounts looking for good projects, uh, I think um, we could be quite confident that with the right approach, with the right mechanisms, streamlining of, uh, of um, uh, project pipelines, and uh, 
even better coordination we can uh, deliver. Of course, with a continuous professional attitude towards project preparation, with even enhanced technical support that is coming from the Commission, from the EIB uh, and national promotional banks, and of course with continuous um, try for uh, excellence and global leadership, because that gives a really good motivation for us to uh, deploy the mo modern uh, technologies, modern business models, and modern uh, regulatory frameworks as well. So uh, thank you again. Very exciting today's uh, empowered us all with uh, optimism. But of course, uh, the list of things we have to do is also long. Uh, and I'm, I think we all convinced that through the ecosystem approach and really cooperation and co uh, engagement, we can uh, deliver also on those uh, on that list. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, we can move on to the questions. Please wait for the microphone. Do we have microphones? Uh, I, I will take it there first. Thank you. State your name and the media you are working for. Hello. Artur Skatlerus, Baltic News Service, uh, Lithuania. Uh, Commissioner Bolt, uh, I have a question about Real Baltica. Uh, with Brexit in the horizon, can you or anyone in Commission? assure Baltic states that uh, the funding will be 85% for the project? Well, as much as I can ensure anything in this life, uh, we saw what happened in the last three, four years uh, globally and in EU. But uh, of course, we will follow our model, especially for railways. Uh, and uh, I hope that Real Baltica will deliver on the dates and they will use all the opportunities that they have under this financial uh, period at the full extent. Uh, and now, as I told you, we are negotiating now how the next MFF will look like. Uh, and uh, of course, I'm sure that uh, Baltic states will be at, uh, very much present at the table and negotiate the next framework too. But please, let's focus now and use the mechanisms available. And uh, the current mechanism, there will be no change. Yes, in, in the second uh, row. Thank you, uh, Ognjan Georgiev, uh, Capital Weekly, Bulgaria. I have a question for both of you, probably. Um, you say that Connecting Europe has delivered and everybody agreed on that. Does that mean that in the next period the Commission is going to fight with the country, uh, mem uh, um, member countries to give more of their transport financing to the uh, Connecting Europe facility? And will uh, the countries agree to that uh, demand? I can confirm that there, there was broad uh, consensus that uh, if we want to talk about one Europe, then we have to well, deliver good connections. And without um, cross-border connections, it's not um, possible. And um, we all also um, discussed the future of CEF, and basically um, ministers were in the position that um, this new blending tool is a is good tool as an addition, but uh, it doesn't replace CEF grants. So there was uh, strong support for continuation of this um, mechanism. Well, my call at the end to the ministers was to really take all the figures. For example, um, 10 T core network investments are expected to generate some 4,500 uh, 4, billion uh, of uh, cumulated GDP. And uh, which um, and correspond to around 13 million job years and a reduction of a 7 million tons of CO2 emissions between 2015 and 2030. So these are the figures you, they have to take now uh, on the table. So financial ministers, uh, ministers responsible for health uh, and education. And uh, together, we, of course, will have to prioritize then who has the largest contribution to uh, the overall uh, prosperity of EU. We will argue to uh, and show the projects, and we will argue th about the benefits of transport and connectivity, as I said, as a whole. And I hope that uh, we will be successful in a fair uh, neg in negotiation, uh, in a sense of a fair distribution also of resources. But uh, I cannot. Uh, guarantee you anything at this point, but I, I can say that all stakeholders are really uh, working hard to, to show uh, the contribution and to show the value add that this is creating for you. 
Yes, on the side. On the side, uh, gentleman in a, in a white shirt. Uh, George Alexakis, uh, journalist from Reporter.gr, financial website from Greece. Could you please elaborate on this uh, transfer of resources between, between the cohesion funds and uh, the SEF policy? Uh, is, any, is, is there any possibility of uh, uh, having deficits in cohesion policy that af affects many, many member states? This transfer will uh, make a lack of resources for certain policy areas. So I would like to, to, to check if there is a kind of uh, lack of uh, financing for certain policies of the cohesion areas and elaborate on this transfer. Well, at this point, it's hard for me to uh, comment on my colleague's portfolio, which is the regional development. What I said is that 11 billion euros that were managed now by the, uh, by the CEF mechanism uh, has been fully deployed. The envelopes have been used, and uh, it shows that this project approach and phase approach to financing also of the uh, regional needs seem to be working. So now uh, we are working in this spirit further and trying to see if we we can uh, improve other mechanisms to be able to deliver uh, faster and in a more efficient way through the experience of CEF. Mr. Was in the front. Pavra Autio, Helsinki Sanomat. Are you ready to welcome Chinese money in, in, in investing in these, these 10 Ts? Or are conditions for, for Chinese money do, do it, does it differ from the condition of Western money? Well, I think uh, President Juncker was very clear to, in his speech to, in, um, uh, to, to the Union when he said that, of course, we are welcoming uh, foreign investors in European infrastructure, but under very clear rules uh, that have to uh, be respected. He also talked about reciprocity. Uh, mechanism, and he also talked about uh, strategic uh, projects that uh, project of a strategic value that need to be uh, very well considered before uh, financed by uh, foreign uh, capital. But in overall, uh, and I can confirm that. Uh, concretely, uh, very specifically for the Chinese investments. We work very now well in a structural and very systemic way through the connectivity platform with Chinese, where we are aligning our standards, we are aligning our uh, regulatory framework. Uh, as a matter of fact, we have now nine points of this connectivity platform that we agreed in spring on, where we are progressing uh, really well. But uh, we need to make sure that we are moving together uh, and uh, I think President really set a very clear uh, priorities uh, that need to be also included in that. But uh, by no means we are closing European market for foreign investments. But if your question was that did we discuss it today, then basically today we focused on the possibilities that we do have here in Europe. And we had very good uh, presentation from um, European Investment Bank, mm. for example. There was uh, in the center... Uh, gentlemen in a grey suit. Where's the mic? Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much, Werner Balzen, Deutsche Verkehrszeitung. Um, if you allow me, I would like to change the subject. There was another issue on the agenda, and that was uh, the connectivity in air traffic. Um, could you describe what was the direction of, of the debate? Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, that was another topic from yesterday. It was uh, also um, a very good debate. Uh, commission, together with the Eurocontrol, we presented uh, a uh, first version of a connectivity index, uh, which is also one of the elements of aviation strategy, and we delivered on it. Uh, we presented uh, the software, which allows us now to calculate the connectivity index and to uh, help member states to make proper decisions regarding the aviation connectivity. Uh, but at the same time, we all agreed, and this is an important uh, point that uh, was a point of a conclusion, that this connectivity index to be used properly needs to be extended in the future to all modes. Uh, and the first phase will probably follow with the high-speed uh, railway network. 
networks. So basically the purpose was, I mean, the, the motivation was that connectivity is, besides efficiency, are two core objectives of European transport, and we need to be able to see and measure and compare uh, in order to pick the best multimodal solution. So the first step was made for aviation, because they were most ready, they're most digitalized as well, and the information were ready, but um, the conclusion of the council, informal council, was that uh, this needs to be uh, followed further with new versions that will include all modes. Well, and if I may add from a member state's point of view, then currently there are only um, two possibilities to, su to support air connectivity. Well, these are uh, the public service obligation and state aid measures that comply with the um, respective EU rules. And, um, well, um, in my point of view, the um, PSO is a rather um, domestic su support mother measure. So, in principle, we need a tool which, uh, on one hand, would help to ensure the connectivity, but on the other hand, would not undermine the liberalized competition in the enlarged single market. Thank you. I saw the dark suit gentleman in the middle first. Hello, um, I'm Benimino Pagliaro from La Stampa uh, in Italy. Uh, I have two questions. The first one is um, focused on, on Italy and France. Um, we heard some, in the last month, we had some uh, doubts expressed by, by the France government on the funding and development of the turin Lyon uh, train link, and uh, we know that uh, the two governments should talk about it in, in the next days, but uh, w what, what is your update and what, what do you think about it? Um, the second one is more general. Did you talk or uh, do you plan to uh, talk in the funding till 2030 about drones and driverless? Because the, uh, the, the roads you will be building uh, till 2030 will be different roads, I guess. Maybe just quickly, I go first and then. Um, Italy, uh, France, uh, negotiations or dialogues. Um, yes, uh, I have. I had a bilateral with the French minister, uh, and um, we. It was brought to our attention that they are reviewing all their infrastructure uh, decisions, but there was no talk about any dropping or anything like that. Uh, what they're doing is, and they will continue a dialogue with their counterparts in Italy to see uh, if, it's, uh, if they can improve efficiency and if, they can, um, if there are any additional changes needed in the scheduling. But uh, I ask uh, the minister to really make sure that they understand that this is a corridor project, that this is one of the essential um, projects on uh, on the corridor, and um, whenever, if any changes will be made, uh, they need to uh, dis have an open discussion with all countries on this corridor. Um, but I didn't see any problem uh, in this account. The second one uh, regarding the drones and um, autonomous uh, vehicles, of course, that's why that is part of digitalization. And Commission is making some very uh, big steps uh, in order to make sure that we stay global leader in this area as well. Let me just mention a few. Uh, we did not discuss this in details because we we were discussing much more um, strategic uh, uh, moves in a sense of financing, but digitalization um, has covered that. A uh, couple of days ago in Frankfurt, um, three member states signed uh, the pilot projects for the first testing bed, live testing bed of autonomous cars. That was Germany, France, and Luxembourg. There are two more under uh, preparation um, between Netherlands, Belgium, and Germany, and Hungary, Austria, and Slovenia. Slovenia. That's why Commission uh, follow up immediately on the conclusions of Frankfurt me uh, uh, informal meeting uh, of member states uh, with the formation of a task group, which will happen still this year, where we will uh, exchange views on uh, and experiences on live test beds, and in parallel then. Um, uh, and uh, try to identify where the intervention from the Commission is needed, where additional standards are needed, and where additional uh, regulatory frameworks are needed. Uh, 
In addition to that, um, we will also, uh, in 2018, uh, move forward on, um, on a digitalization of transport, which will be part of the third uh, mobility package uh, as part of the overall Chapeau uh, story, uh, Europe on the move. Um, and uh, I would like to bring the attention to the drones, as far as the drone subject is concerned, to uh, the hopefully this year a new regulatory framework, IASA framework, which for the first time has also European um, regulatory framework for drones. Um, as part of the uh, new IASA um, regulation. And in November in Finland, we will introduce formally uh, also a European concept of urban aviation mobility uh, that uh, will uh, place drones and also flying vehicles, if you want, uh, in the concept of urban mobility. So things are moving forward really fast. Uh, they are. Um, but uh, as I said, with the ministers, we did not go in specifics today because the focus was on the financial tools and mechanisms. Yes, uh, thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Minister. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have time for any additional questions. So thank you for coming and hope to see you at the conference. Thank you.